Naval Space Force protect orbiting gas stations and bases on the moon? Landing humans on the moon in 2024. NASA's Lunar Exploration Program Overview, Artemis. Welcome to Space Force News. Everything Space Force News and Views. Today I'm going to share with you a quick article I already shared with you the headline, and then we're going to look at the latest report on plans to colonize the moon, send people to the moon by 2024. This is incredible. Check this out. As U.S. companies venture farther from Earth, whether the newest service will protect them remains under discussion. Earlier this month, U.S. firm OrbitFab has inked its first deal to provide a gas station in space. This is going to help satellites and spacecraft continue after they exhaust the propellant they brought into space, into orbit. It's another sign of the infrastructure being built to help firms, countries, and technology reach the moon and beyond. Now, for the Space Force, it's generating another set of questions about its responsibilities and will it be required to defend these assets and will it be the best interest of the Space Force as well as the nation? We are already starting to see so much private industry reaching towards cislunar space and lunar projects, so this refueling that it opens up is now the condition that you can travel beyond only the fuel that you can bring with you. Think how limited our travels would be if we could only go as far as one tank of gas allows us, says Leslie Kahn, senior manager of research and analysis with the Space Foundation. It allows U.S. interests to advance and other national interests. It also raises the specter that as U.S. companies expand into space, how will the U.S. Space Force and other nations seek to advance and extend their defense responsibilities into the same environment? Then it goes on to say that there is no policy answer yet. From Victoria Sampson, and this is the Washington Office Director of the Secure World Foundation. The administration is still thinking about what the U.S. wants its role for the U.S. military to be in space, Sampson said. Chief of Space Operations General John Raymond said that role is still being shaped. As the nation goes further away, as the world goes further away from the Earth, I think there's going to be a requirement to have at least, at a minimum, some domain awareness on that environment. Raymond said Wednesday at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Raymond, as well as other military leaders, have gone on to suggest that space is in fact the highest national defense priority. Also, citing Russia's recent anti-satellite tests that sent large debris filled hurling towards the International Space Station and China's hypersonic missile launch that circled the globe. Then in 2020, the Space Force and NASA agreed to collaborate on helping ensure safe spaceflight as NASA prepares to launch Artemis. This is a mission to return to the moon. The U.S. is a signatory to the 1967 United Nations Treaty prohibiting military activity on the moon, and China isn't. As the domain becomes more congested, more contested, more competitive, I see the need for rules of the road, Raymond said. But he added, I'm not naive to think that if we have rules of the road that everybody's going to follow. Read the article in full at defenseone.com. Now let's take a look at the Artemis Project, the Artemis missions, NASA will land the first woman and first person of color on the moon using innovative technologies to explore more of the lunar surface than ever before. We will collaborate with commercial and international partners and establish the first long-term presence on the moon. Then we will use what we learn on and around the moon to take the next giant leap, sending the first astronauts to Mars. Now let's take a look at the Artemis project. We're going to go directly to the PDF. Landing humans on the moon in 2024. The foundation for our return to the moon is NASA's deep space transportation system, the Orion spacecraft, SLS rocket, the HLS, and the EGS facilities that include a modernized spaceport. 
the Orion spacecraft powered by a service module provided by ESA, the European Space Agency, has been specifically designed for deep space human operations. For up to four crew, the SLS rocket is the human rated heavy lift rocket designed to launch Orion and send it on missions to the moon. Next year, science and technology will lead our return to the moon as we see the first payloads delivered to the lunar surface aboard CLPS, provider, landers, and 13 CubeSats deployed from the SLS during Artemis 1, five of which will return lunar data. Human exploration under the Artemis program will begin with the crewed flight test of SLS and Orion on Artemis 2 in 2023. In the same time frame, NASA and its commercial HLS partners also plan to conduct in-space flight testing of the lander system. Including potential tests to the lunar surface, NASA's goal is to conduct in-space testing of every possible hardware, software, and operational system required for Artemis III prior to the mission in 2024. The Orion crew module for Artemis I mission has been fully assembled, tested, and integrated with the European service module. The service module built by ESA provides most of the propulsion power and cooling systems for the crew module where astronauts will live and work during Artemis missions. The integrated spacecraft successfully completed simulated in-space environments testing, verifying that Orion systems will perform as expected during Artemis missions. Inside the world's largest vacuum chamber, the spacecraft was subjected to the extreme electromagnetic conditions and temperatures minus 250 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit of space. The campaign was completed ahead of schedule, and the spacecraft has since returned to the Space Coast for final preparations ahead of the integration with the SLS rocket. Artemis II is the first crewed flight of SLS and Orion, and it's going to send four astronauts to the lunar environment for the first time in more than 50 years. This will be the Artemis Generation's Apollo 8 moment, when the astronauts aboard Orion will capture the full globe of the Earth from afar as a backdrop to the moon. Then, it talks about Mars. Thanks to nearly 20 years of continuous human habitation of the ISS, future Mars-class life support systems can be designed with a 36% reduction in mass. Mars systems will require less maintenance and fewer spares, making them much safer than current operational systems. These improved life support and environmental control technologies demonstrated on the ISS have already been incorporated in Orion and will be put on test on Artemis II. Now this talks about Artemis III surface operations. The exact landing site for Artemis III astronauts depends on several factors, including the specific science objectives and the launch date. High resolution data received from NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter has provided incredible views and detailed mapping of the lunar surface. And this also includes changing and in lighting throughout the year. The Artemis science goals will be driven by U.S. and international science community priorities, broad lunar-based activities, broad lunar-based science themes that can be addressed with human robotic investigations on the moon, include the study of planetary process, the study of lunar volatile cycles, and the in situ resource utilization potential of resources for lunar exploration and beyond. The impact history of Earth-Moon system a platform to study the universe and geospace, including Earth. Record of the ancient sun, or a record of the ancient sun, a platform for experimental science in the lunar environment. And this is going to spearhead the way for more colonizing of space, Mars, and possibly other planets, possibly in the atmosphere of Venus. And I really like seeing the different industries that are being incorporated it's also now moving into the commercial sector i know people personally that have had meetings with corporate about building condos on the moon using 3d printers and moon dust this is the future and i've seen this since the space force was publicly introduced absolutely incredible thank you for watching i hope you have a fantastic day Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. You'll get access to all notifications. 
and may the stars be our guide to destiny.